it's a fantastic day here in the southeast of Ireland, down in the Garvin. Uh, kids are all playing. So I thought I'd have a go at making a video that addresses a lot of people's uh, concerns regarding sharpening with very, very limited equipment. And uh, you can't get much more limited with a sheet of sandpaper, a mouse mat, and one of these cheapo diamond plates from Aldi or Lidl if you have uh, one of those near you in the UK or in Ireland. Uh, in the US, I'm not sure, Kmart, I suppose, or Walmart, you, you'd probably get the same thing. And there's a set of stones that I started with originally. They're the Buck Tri-Stone. They're the fine, medium and coarse Washita stone. And they're a good old job as well. Okay. So, it's a little bit windy here today. But I'm going to get started and we'll show how to sharpen a knife with very, very little. Right, the two things that affect our edge are angle and abrasive. Okay, what I like to use for a very cheap and and uh, convenient setup is abrasive sheets. They can be got anywhere that does... Um, there you go. That's fine. Anywhere that does uh, a motor factors, that does uh, treatments for finishing metal. You get the sanding sheets in coarse, medium, fine, up to about 2000 grit. Okay, my preferred abrasive for this kind of temporary setup is sheets wet and dry paper. You can get them in various grades, that's a fine grade. I'm using a, a cotton block. All you want is something that your knuckles can clear. So that when you're setting your edge, you're, you're not scraping your hands along the table. So, cotton block, uh, put the wet and dry over a, a cheap set of stones that you have to change the grade of the stone. And if you're going to convex, Put a mouse mat underneath the wet and dry paper so there's a slight bit of give don't press down let the abrasive do the work the other thing is the angle if you get a, a sheet of a4 paper just an ordinary um, printer sheet fold it side to side twice so you fold it in halves corner to corner and then fold it in halves again so half of a 90 degree angle is 45 half of that again and that'll get you close enough to your 20 degree angle which is what you want to be setting on most general purpose knives, kitchen knives, that kind of thing so if you use that as a guide and let your hand learn that angle and then maintain that you can go slightly lower for um, harder knives or slicing knives you can go slightly higher raise, raise the spine a little bit if you're going to be doing um, axes or heavy chopping knives, camp knives, that kind of thing but same thing, if you're using paper, draw back towards yourself. Don't go forward into the paper, you'll only cut it. You need to raise the handle as you come back. What you want to be doing is keeping the angle of abrasion at 90 degrees to the very edge. So you need to turn and lift to match whatever angle is on the knife. If you're just doing a sheep's foot knife where you just have a, a totally straight edge, then by all means, put it down, draw it straight back. Job done. But if you have a curve, especially if you have uh, recurves, you really need to move the handle around to match those angles. Okay, the same thing that you can do with the wet and dry paper, you can do with these um, cheap diamond plates that you get in the likes of Aldi and Lidl. Set your angle, work up through the grits. And that'll work out fine. So. When you finish with your gritted stones, what you want to do is a bit of stropping. And this is an old leather belt glued onto a piece of gerbil of that. The piece of rubber on the back side is for doing hoodoo hone. Uh, you can like stick sandpaper onto that. There's a slight bit of give in the rubber, so it'll convex an edge fairly handily. And the same way you, you stick the wet and dry paper on there, walk up to the grits until you reach an end. Okay, I know I've been talking about uh, convex and V grinds. So I drew a little diagram, and it's terrible. But uh, okay, this one, type of an apple seed profile, is a convex grind. This, dead straight, is a V grind. That's the type of thing you get from the Edge Pro. And I don't know if you can see this. This is a board, this is a wire edge. So if you're sharpening, and you're sharpening from the spine towards the edge, you will pull, you'll pl it's called plastic deformation of steel. And you will pull a little bit of steel all the way forward and out over the tip, and it'll curl over in the direction that you're sharpening. If you go to this side and sharpen down, you'll flip that wire edge back the other way. So 
every so often as you're working up through the grits, uh, what I try to do is uh, at the very coarse grits when I'm setting an edge, make a bore, make a wire edge, then strip it off by drawing the knife edge through the end grain of a piece of pine. So you get something like this, and just lightly slice, and you'll break off that bore, that wire edge. Okay, to finish, piece of leather and get go down to your auto factors again get auto saw or peak their uh, metal polish rub that into the leather belt stick this on the nap side up the kind of suede side up so that there's a kind of a wick there to hold the abrasive rub this in leave it dry in and when it's dried in you have the height to clear your knuckles lay this on at the same edge or the same angle that you're sharpening at and do the same motion just to polish up that edge it's not like a steel where a very smooth steel will burnish an edge. This is actually an abrasive. It's a very, very fine abrasive, so it's still cutting, but only very, very slightly. And that'll put a finish and a final edge on any blade, really. Uh, this is a sword that's an L6 tool steel. It takes a very nice edge, a good fine grain, very nice carbides in it. But for a very cheap setup, an old leather belt and a few sheets of sandpaper, and you can do a whole lot of sharpening. What I like to use. What I do with the Edge Pro is generally set a 20 or 15 degree per side edge or 30 and 40 degree inclusive because those angles match what's preset on the Spider Crush Art Maker and it's very very handy for touch ups. You have the fine rods and you have the coarser ceramic rods and you have these copper lads that are a safety guard to stop you slicing the hand off yourself and this is very very good for uh, touch ups. I'll show you how to use that now in a sec. Okay, I have the Sharp Maker here set up. The guards are there to stop the blade sliding off and cutting my hand. The lead actually goes on as, as a handle. These are the brown medium core stones and they can go in either flat like this or turned to a corner so you're sharpening on a, an edge which puts a lot more pressure on the edge. For touch-ups I doubt you should even be going to the brown rods, the white rods probably do you. What you want to do, what I'd usually do is stand up so that you're directly above the knife. You're looking straight down at it so you can see if the knife is canted to either side, which will change your angle. Bring the heel of the knife into contact with the stones, swipe straight down, bring the tip up, and do not come off the stone. Try to come all the way down and finish with the tip in the middle of the stone, which prevents rounding off of your tip. You don't want to lose that pointy point. So if you're coming off the stone and you're just going, you're going to round off the tip. Okay, so you want to come straight down and stop. Go to the other side, come straight down and stop. Okay, and that'll touch up the edge. If you want to see if you're actually hitting the edge where you want, get yourself one of these uh, big marker pens. Get a good thick one. I like a, a good thick chisel grind. And mark your edge, just paint it. You can either kind of slice into the tip or paint along the two sides, either way. But once you have the edge blacked, once you stroke it down the stones, it should be taken off the black marker where the stone meets the steel. And that should show you that you're actually hitting the very, very apex of the edge and you're sharpening all the way out to the point. You see where there's any flat spots, it's a very, very good indicator that you're going on the right track when you are sharpening your edge. So hopefully these tips will help you out when you're starting out in sharpening. Okay, thanks for watching. Right, when you're maintaining your strop, when it's been used a while, it's gonna start getting black like that. What I like to use is one of these phosphor bronze brushes for cleaning the barbecue. Scrub the leather with the phosphor bronze brush. Give it a good old scouring. It'll take off the old compound, the bits of steel, and it'll raise the nap of the leather. Just bring up that little furry, suede finish so that when you rub in new finish, it's like a wick, it'll hold it. And then when you stroke across it, there's going to be enough compound there to actually work and do the job. And you'll see it turning black like this again. So every so often it's going to go black and shiny. Just give it a scrape. I mean, you can use the, the scraper to get off the heavy stuff. Use the phosphor bronze brush to take up the nap. Reapply your compound, drive on. Okay, so I've gone up to the, the grits on sandpaper. Did a little stropping on the sharp maker. Give it a little strop. I did use the autosol strop and I used the long straighter strop, which I really, really like. You've seen this before in other videos. It's kind of a, a very thin suede leather, 
glued onto a good hank of very very flat metite. Great strop. And combined with the smurf poo that he sells, this type of a blue crayon type uh, strop compound gives a really really fine finish. So just to finish up the hillbilly sharpening video, just to show that it really does. So like I, I know a lot of people get very into um, Japanese and Chinese sharpening stones, I, I have a few of those for doing straight razors and that kind of thing, but I'm not sure that the actual grit itself matters that much. The size of the grit does change, the shape of the grit will change if you're using silicon carbide or if you're using diamond, you'll have flatter or uh, sharper shapes. The, the diamonds leave deeper grooves that have to be polished out more. Something like a, a Belgian Cortecul stone for doing straight razors is a, I think it's a dodecahedron shape. It's very, very rounded, so it doesn't leave very, very sharp uh, scratch marks. Very, very easy to polish up on the strop. But the end result, once you work through the grits, up to the finest grit you can get, and then on the leather strop, it might take a little more work, but you will end up with a very, very sharp razor edge. So, and that's good enough for me. Thank you very much.